All right, everyone, welcome to our A to J author and new user training. My name is Jessica Frank, and I am the program coordinator here at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Before we get started, you all are on mute. If you have a question, just raise your hand or put your question in the question box. If you don't have a microphone today, you can put comments in the question box as well. If you're calling in by phone, make sure to enter your audio pin so that we can hear you. And this session is being recorded and will be posted on our A to J Author YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash A to J Author. Today's topic is advanced conditions. So this is a little bit beyond beginners, but it's less than an advanced user. So um, if at any time you have questions, feel free to stop me um, by raising your hand or putting a question in the question box, and I will try and clarify anything for you. And we will have time um, at the end if I miss your questions in the question box to go back. On our agenda today is what are conditions? Um, getting started, an overview of conditions, the event, the actions, condition operators, condition syntax, and then additional resources for you. So what are conditions? Conditions are basically if-then statements. And they evaluate a scenario and then apply an action accordingly. So they evaluate an event and then apply an action. In the two examples that I have here, the top one, I am evaluating what, um, the, if, whether the age of the end user is less than 18. I have the variable client DOBDA, so client date of birth, date, um, and I've asked them probably, probably in a previous question, what is your date of birth? Then I use the function age to convert that date of birth into a number, into years, and then I evaluate whether that is less than 18 years. If it is less than 18, I'm telling A to J author to take the end user to the question, do not qualify at exit. So it would be a question that says, I'm sorry, you have to be at least 18 years old to use this uh, form, and please exit. The second condition, I'm evaluating um, whether or not the end user, what number they put in for number of children, so number of children and you, is greater than one. If that is true, then I want to set a new variable, child or children TE, to children. If it is false, I want to set that same variable, child or children TE, to child. So this would be how many children do you have? They put they have three children. Then in subsequent questions, I can personalize it to them, so what are the names of your children, rather than what is the name of your child slash children. This personalizes it for the end user. How to get started. The first thing you're going to want to do, right here we are in um, the question design window, and we are on the advanced tab. So generally when you open up a question, you'll be in the question tab. You can also be in the fields tab, the buttons tab, or this advanced tab. So this is what the advanced tab looks like if you don't have any conditions in it. To add a condition, you use uh, the plus sign. Once you click the plus sign, a lot more stuff expands out. So the event expands, the condition, the actions, and um, what, where you want it to go or what you want it to do. So just an overview of what the, what the conditions tab looks like. We have the conditions at the top. That is the summary of all the conditions for that question. We have the plus or the minus sign. Um, the plus sign will add another condition. The minus sign will delete the highlighted condition. We'll delete everything, so you use that sparingly, everything for that condition. The event is when to test for the condition, and there's two options. You can see that it's a uh, drop-down option, so you can either select after user presses button, which is shown here, or you could select before the question is displayed. We'll talk a little bit more about those two differences in a second. Then you have the condition, that is what telling A to J what exactly you want to evaluate. And then the actions box is a synopsis of the bottom, if action question. So this is just the same as summary of all the actions, the same as the condition is a summary. This section right here is where the, um, the action actually occurs. So if and this is true or false, the action, go to question, or set variable. If you keep it on go to question, it will have this little yellow folder where you can select the question. If you select uh, set variable to value, 
then it will have a list of variables and then a value. So we'll see that on the next screen. Here is if I had pulled the drop down uh, set variable value, I then have a drop down of all of my variables, and I can pick a value for that variable. Conditions are tested in the order they are listed. It's important to remember that you can have up to 50 conditions per question. So it's important to remember that they are tested in order because if a condition is found to be true, and the action that you tell it to do is to move to another question, the rest of the following conditions will not be tested. So make sure that your conditions are in the order you want them tested. Very important. The event. There's two options for the event, either before question is displayed or after user presses button. If you select before question is displayed and the condition is true, and that action that you tell it to do is to move to another question, the, this question will never be displayed to the end user. If you press, if you select after user presses button, the question is always shown. So before question is displayed could potentially not be shown to the end user. After user presses button, the end user will always see this question. The action. If a condition is met, there's two possible actions. So this is the same two examples I showed in the beginning. The first one is telling it to go to another question. So if the client's date of birth converted into uh, years is less than 18, I want A to J to kick them to the uh, do not qualify and exit question. I can also set a variable value. So in the second one, again, that's that number of children and youth, that's greater than one. I want to set a new variable, child or children to eat children. If it's false, I want to set that same variable to child. You can have multiple actions based on one condition. So in this example, I have on the second set of variable value, I have one condition and two actions. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. You could also have, um, so there's two options for conditions, either setting a variable to a value or setting a uh, a destination question. So you can have the destination question and the variable happen based on one condition. In this example, I'm evaluating whether what the end user has put in as their income, the variable income at NU, is greater than 35,000. In the actions, you can see it, the highlighted one. If true, then set the new variable, income too high, true false, to true. If this is also true, I want to take them to the exit question. So this is maybe a qualifying question based on their income. If their income is too high, I want to tell it to set this variable too high and to kick them to the exit question. If it is false, then I want to set the income too high TF uh, variable to false. I don't have it doing anything taking them to a destination question based on false, so where are they going to go if it's false? That is controlled by this continue button over here. You would set the destination question in the continue button, the same way you do for any other uh, standard question. Condition operators. An operator is used to compare variables and data in conditions. Variables can be evaluated in a condition with a variety of operators. So these are the equals, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to, um, is, that's the same as uh, equals. Um, so you can use any of these operators in your uh, advanced conditions. This cheat sheet is also in our authoring guide if you're looking for it later. And a little tip that's from my maybe second or third grade teacher to remember if it's greater than or less than, it's always the um, mouth of the alligator is eating the bigger number. So that helps uh, remind you which way to put your um, indicator, your operator. Condition syntax. The variable name must be enclosed in brackets. So um, anytime you use a variable that has a space in it, and your variables probably should have spaces in it if you're following our community naming convention, which has a two-letter indicator after um, the variable name. Like here I have income NU, there's a space between income and NU, I need a bracket. 
the same way you need a bracket when you're using macros if you have a space in your variable. If you don't have a space, it will fail and it will error out and it will be a hot mess trying to figure out why your condition isn't working. So just remember, just always put your variable names in brackets. If you don't have a space, it doesn't hurt it anyway. So um, You can have a space or no space around the operator. So in the two examples here, I have income NU greater than 35,000 with no space. And the bottom one, I have income NU space operator greater than space 35,000. That one doesn't matter. So the important thing to remember is brackets around variables. The condition syntax also, you can use and, the word and, or the word or. In um, evaluating the same variable, you must have two complete expressions with the and or the or in between them. So, for example, let me get my highlighter out here. Here is the correct way to do this. You have the variable, um, the full complete expression, the word and, the full complete expression. This, the bottom example right here, is the incorrect way to do it. This is not going to evaluate whether income, what they, the end user is putting for income, is less than 35000 but still greater than 25000 This will fail and error out. Instead, you must have the variable, the operator, and then whatever number you're evaluating, the word and, or the word or, and again, the same complete expression on the right side as well. Okay. Condition syntax. So use a to j author to do simple math for you or for your end user. Don't make your end user have to think about whether or not their income, what they put in for the income is. They subtracted 10,000 if that would be less than 35,000. Do the math on the back end for them. So here you can evaluate income and you, the, what they put in for their income, and tell A to J to subtract 10,000 from that number and then evaluate whether it's less than 35,000. You can also use functions that are built into A to J to evaluate the data. So in our examples before, I've been evaluating the date of birth, converting it to a year using the age function, and then evaluating whether or not it is greater than or equal to 18. Um, when using functions, so age is a function, date is a function, today is a function. When using functions, wrap the function around the variable. So this age one right here, I have my variable in brackets, always in brackets. Then I have parentheses around it. Then I have the function age. So my variable is wrapped as a variable, then it's wrapped in the function. Um, and the date function converts days into a date. So you can tell it to take today's date plus 90 days and convert that into an actual date for your end user. So instead of saying you need to do X in 90 days from today, you could say you need to do X on June 30th or whatever. You can give them a specific date and be more clear for them. Additional resources. We have our A to J authoring guide, which is downloadable on a to jauthor.org. Chapter 7 deals with advanced tab details, and it also lists the functions. So if you wanted a cheat sheet, you could go there. We also have an online authoring guide on our a to j author.org website that has tutorials on the advanced tab. So let's take a look at the software then. If we go into A to J, I created a sample um, guided interview for conditions. So I'm just going to walk through the preview and then um, we can stop and take a look at it. So here's my first question. I've already entered um, information and so that's why my female end user avatar is here. So welcome to the interview. Enter your name, select your gender. These are standard questions you should be familiar with. Here's a question, what is your date of birth? put in to making this end user 30 years old. Looking at the back end of this, I have an advanced condition where here's where I'm evaluating whether or not they are over 18. If they are not over 18, I'm going to take them to this question, do not qualify, and exit. If um, they are over 18, they will just, based on the continue button, go to the next question, income. 
So I've said I'm over 18, I hit continue, I go on to the next question. If I say that I'm under 18, hit continue, it bounces to the exit. So you can see there's two different options of evaluating. We see the script on the side, we go back. This is helpful if you've never used the interview script. You can always pull up variables, the list of variables, or the interview script itself and see what's going on in the background. So here, when I click this continue button, here I'm still under 18, um, I hit continue. You can see that it has about, it comes up with a client date of, date of birth, client date of birth, which I've said is 5296, making them under 18. So A to J is converting that variable into a number in years. That number in years is less than 18. This condition is true. Therefore, I want them to exit to go to this do not qualify question. If we go back, you can see the script. If I make myself 30 instead, it has a new birth date, new date of birth. It has evaluated that and found that client date of birth based on 5283 makes them 30 today. That covered into age is 30. It is, uh, is that less than 18? No, it's false. Go on to the standard next question. So I will close this for now. But that script is helpful for um, diagnosing errors in your conditions as well. The next question is asking about household income. If we look at this question. Let me go to the advanced tab. I have a couple different conditions here. So first I have the condition. This is the first condition. Remember they're evaluated in order. I want to know if their income is greater than 35,000. If it is true, set this variable. Set the variable income true, too high, true, false to true, and exit them out of this question. If it's false, set that same variable to false. My second condition then is asking whether or not they might be in between. So they could be on, you guys in your legal aid could offer a sliding fee scale based on if their income is greater than 25,000 but less than 35,000. So you can evaluate this. This one is saying whether or not it is the number that they have input for their income is less than 35,000 and greater than 25,000. If it is true, I want to do a follow-up question about how many people live in their house. So you can do any kind of follow-up question here. So I am going to go in between that range, 34,000. How many people live in your house? Three people. Click continue. Then ask if I'm currently pregnant. No. How many children do you have? This is another um, example of a condition I have running in the background. So later I might want to use the correct word in a form or um, in the interview itself and I might need to know, know children or child. This is also um, helpful. You can use a condition to evaluate what they select as their user avatar gender for the he, she pronoun um, in hot dogs as well. So how many children do you have? We pull up the script. I select continue and it evaluated that the number of children was greater than one since it was two, which is true. And then it has set child or children, TE, to children. We go back. I change it to one child. I hit continue. This is false. Now the one is not greater than one. And it has set the child or children variable to child. We keep going. For my legal issues, I need a restraining order. Have I had help with a lawyer? No. And congratulations, we are done with the interview. So before we uh, quit, I'll show you guys just how to do one of these from the beginning. So let's do, um, we'll redo this date of birth one. So I have date of birth. This is my standard uh, question design window question tab. I'm asking for their date of birth. In the field, I create a date, label it birthday, set my variable, put min and max. Buttons is the same. I have a destination question. Magic happens in advanced. So let me just delete this one. Start over. So this is what it would look like from the beginning. Add a condition. I want to do it after the user presses the button because I've asked them a question for their birth date. Then I want to do age as the function, parentheses, wrap it. The um, 
correct variable is client date of birth DA. So make sure you spell your variable correctly and capitalize it. It makes a, uh, a difference. Wrap it in brackets. Wrap it back in that parentheses and then evaluate whether or not it is less than 18. And again, it doesn't matter if you have a space around the operator. It's the same thing. Action. If it is true that they are less than 18 years old, I want to kick them out of the interview and take them to this do not qualify question. So if we preview that, your date of birth here is over 18, hit continue, it's false, it's taking them to the next question. If they are not yet 18, it kicks them out of the interview itself. So are there any questions um, before uh, we finish? Okay, not seeing any questions or hands raised. So um, since you're here, you know that we have an A to J author new user workshop on the first Thursday of every month. We also have an advanced user forum the third Thursday of every other month. We will be having one on May 16th. Um, so May 16th, we are going to have the advanced user forum. And even though you are new users, it might be helpful for you to attend, um, get to know get to see what other advanced users are dealing with. We may have some more information on A to J5, so it might be um, useful to come see what we have there. And we have our live A to J author and hot dogs training coming up here at Chicago Kent in September, September 12th and 13th. And I believe registration should be opening this month on probono.net on their trainings, the DA support slash trainings, for more information there. A big thank you to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting service. And if you have any questions or feedback, my email and phone number is here, so feel free to reach out. And I will see you all next week or next month.